So here is where this gets a little tricky and you have to do some math. This is why I don't package mine in a big container like you would bulk formula and it's in single serving pouches because you can't realistically do this math every time you make a bottle and with multiple batches. It would be a pain in the butt. You'd have to get a scale out. You'd have to do all of that. So instead, I prepackage it ahead of time. So all I have to do is add the water. Um, we've got all of our dried milk. I have it in these bags just temporarily. Do not store your milk in these, especially not long term. It's fine for like a day or something while you're working on it, but don't do it long term. And there's desiccant. Um, I just took it out, so that way I can weigh these. And what I'm going to do is we have our scale, we have our bowl, and we need to weigh each bag. I do a bag per tray, but I mean you can fill them however you want. Um, and you're gonna weigh the dry weight of these and you're gonna mark it down on your paper where you've marked the wet weight. And you're gonna do this for all five. All right, so I've weighed all my dried bags and you write down the weights and then make sure you deduct the weight of the bag. We did this in the beginning too. If you don't, then it's gonna skew your numbers. <laughs> um, so I deducted the weight of the bag and how you calculate this. And I'll make a separate video just for the formula so that people can quick reference it if they need to. Um, how you calculate it is, you subtract your dry weight from your wet weight to get how much water you need to add to reconstitute the entire batch. So wet weight minus dry weight equals water to add. Simple enough? So then the next formula to determine how many, um, the weight that you need to put to reconstitute each ounce, how much powder to each ounce of water, that formula is dry weight divided by water to add. So you have to do the first formula and that'll tell you what you need. For this batch right here, I need 0.141 ounces to reconstitute one ounce. And it'll make slightly more than one ounce, but it is way too hard to do it otherwise. And so it's easier to do it like this. You'll have about an ounce. You'll have zero point, you'll have 1.141 ounces when you're done. Um, but I like to simplify it and just do per ounce of water. And so I add the powder to per ounce of water. I strongly recommend having a small little jewelry looking scale. I don't know if you can even see this. My husband jokes that it looks like I'm counting drugs. I'm weighing out drugs when I'm doing breast milk. It does kind of look like that. Um, but this scale goes down to the tenth, hundred, thousandth of an ounce because it'll do 0.141. Um, and I can measure out each bag. I can tear it out with my cup and get it done. So now that we've got all the math done, now we're ready to bag it and package it for long-term use. So you're gonna actually need quite a bit of supplies. Um, I have a Wabi Baby UV sterilizer, and so I sterilize my supplies every time I use them because I don't want them getting gross or contaminated, especially when I'm packaging this for long-term. The less bacterial contamination, the better. Um, you're gonna need a glass measuring cup. This is gonna go on your scale and you're gonna tear it out and this is what you're gonna measure into. Um, I have a designated scoop that I use to get the powder out of the bag and obviously I wear gloves during this. You're gonna need gloves, woohoo. Um, I have this, sometimes I use the funnel, sometimes I use a scoop and do it like that because each batch is different. Some are really powdery and fluffy and have a hard time going down the funnel. Some are really grainy and go down the funnel super easy. So I just kind of gauge it as I go. Um, and then here's my, here's my funnel. Um, you want one with a wider base because it's kind of a pain dealing with this. And then I have a knitting needle I use to push everything down the funnel. Now you're also going to need oxygen absorbers. These are not the same as desiccant. Do not use desiccant. You need oxygen absorbers and you need a way to seal them. Some people will seal them back in like a mason jar, but when they're exposed to air, it uses up everything in them. And so the longer they're exposed to air, the less they work. And so I vacuum pack mine right away when I'm done. So that I get out what I need, put it in a jar, seal the jar, and I vacuum pack it so they don't lose any of their efficiency. Um, and then you need bags. I like these shiny little ones. They're seriously like they're holographic. I love it. Um, I told my husband the reason I got the holographic sparkly pretty ones is to remind him how valuable the contents are. They don't call it liquid gold for nothing. <laughs> um, so I have these itty bitty ones, which are what I use for one and two ounce portions. And then I have these bigger ones that I use for four ounce portions. So that's what you need to get started. And we're gonna do that in just a second. 
so I got my gloves on. We're ready to rumble. So these are these. Each, these were each a tray of the milk. I kind of have to squish the air out of there. I don't really put it through a grinder or anything. I just kind of squish it up in here because it actually squashes and powders really easily just by hand. Like you don't need to run it through a coffee grinder or anything. Because, like I said, look at that. It's completely powdered at this point. It's not a big deal. All right. So I've got my cheat sheet here. I have how much I need for each quantity. And so I have my two different sizes of bags. I use this one for one and two ounce, but typically two ounce. And then I use this one for four ounce. You could do three or four, but I do two and four because it's just easier for me and I like having them in those quantities. Um, I've got my cheat sheet for how much. So I need 0 0.141 per ounce. So two, 0 0.282 for a two ounce bag and 0.564 for a four ounce bag. Easy enough. Turn on my scale. Get rid of my extra stuff I don't need right now. We had to tear this out. It's already teared. It's at zero, zero, zero. Open up my bag and let's see. Um, let's do a four ounce bag first. So I need 0.564. Do, 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 do. Try not to get in the way so that you can see. 564. Five two nine. Five six two. Five six one. Now I gotta do it kind of slow. Five six three. than the funnel most of the time and then I can kind of pack it down a little too and get everything in there and we talked about the oxygen absorbers the reason I'm going to seal this before I put an oxygen absorber in it is because I don't want my oxygen absor absorbers sitting out exposed to air and so I seal these all up all right got all that And I will link to these in the comments so you know where to get these ones because I actually really love these guys. So I sealed it all up and I'm just going to squish it up and then I'm going to set it aside and when I'm done filling all my bags then I'll get my oxygen absorbers out and put them in there. Easy peasy.
So we are on almost the last step. Woohoo! You made it this far. I know it's a long process. So this is my heat sealer, my impulse sealer from Harvest Right, and it is going to seal all my fancy smanchy little baggies. So, and it's actually really easy. You kind of have to find the sweet spot on the dial, um, but once you figure that out, they seal super fast. So we're gonna do that now. So when I do this, I try to line up these little notches right along the edge of this brown band. And that seems to work pretty perfect for getting the seal where I want it to be. Voila! I don't know if you can even see that. It's pretty perfect. to the final step and we're almost done. This is all that milk right here in this bag. Um, all I have to do now, they've been sealed. They have an oxygen absorber. I don't know if you can even see that. Whee! Let's try, let's try this. There you go. Now you can see that. Um, they're, they're sealed and they have an oxygen absorber. We just need to write the date on them. Sometimes I put the date that the milk was collected, like if I know that it was all from December, I'll write that date on the left and then I'll write the freeze dried date on the right. But these ones, I'm just gonna write freeze dried. I'll show you in a second. Now we're all labeled. 819, two ounces, ready to go, ready for long-term storage. So there you have it, it's that easy. And when I say easy, it's a lot of work and it's kind of a process, but when you're done, you have this super awesome shelf-stable powder that will last for years. Um, you can pack it in your diaper bag, use it when you're camping, you can have it in your bug-out bag for emergencies, but you have all the convenience of formula with the benefits of breast milk.